Hello people and welcome you to my YouTube channel and this is Diddy Strikes and today I'm going to be weighing into a very serious matter. <laughs> Actually is a matter that before now I don't consider serious. I've had people ask questions, I've had people make comments, I've had people say certain things. For me I'm just like everybody's entitled to his own to his own view but uh when people that i respect so much and people that i know are intelligent are beginning to you know talk that way it becomes necessary for me to wear into it recently our beloved actress uh and uh pastor Yukari Anunobi was caught in the webs uh, advising Igbo people uh, to stop building mansions in the village uh, since they are not likely going to retire to the village uh, and all that, okay? And then it calls my attention because Apostle Yugeria Nunobi is somebody I so much uh, admire and respect. And I know she's intelligent. I know she's well-meaning. I know she's a, a woman of substance and somebody who has made quite a lot of investments. And if she's saying something, I should be able to respect what her view and her opinion. But I want to weigh into it because uh, I've had people say this i'm not responding to her as it were i know that she's simply amplifying an ideology that has been there for a while she's simply i amplifying an ideology that has been there all right so but i just want to come in to you know to weigh into it from a very holistic uh point of view i'm just looking beyond her Okay, what she said actually made me, you know, consider what I've had before or what I've had a lot of people say before. So I'm going to be responding to that. Many people ask the question, why should Igbo people build a gigantic or build gigantic houses or mansions in the village? Why they, since they only uh, visit there a couple of times, maybe in a year, or in a few years and all that, why should they spend so much money building those houses in the village? Building those houses in the village. Now, this is one of the questions that I must answer by asking for the questions because sometimes when a question is so narrow, you cannot see the bigger picture. So sometimes there's a need to ask more questions so that we can broaden the periscope, we can broaden the horizon so that we can see farther, so that we can really do justice to, to that question in terms of trying to proffer uh, or give an answer, proffer a solution to it. All right, why should Ibers build mansions in their villages? <laughs> as if you concern anybody all right why should Igbos build mansions in their villages i wonder how why this is is a headache to some set of people actually but well i will still uh say something about it now this is one of the questions i will also answer your question ask a question why do we encourage nigerians in diaspora to come back home or to come back to Nigeria and build houses and put up investments and all that. Why do the Nigerian government woo Nigerians in diaspora? Why do we encourage our people who are outside there to come back and build houses and bring back investment? Now, if you say whatever answer you give to this is also applicable here. If you say because Nigeria is home you just answered the question why should an evil man build a house 
a mansion in his village or in his country home. Okay? And we can even broaden it because Igbos do more than just building houses. Why should an Igbo man tar the road in his village? Why should an Igbo man develop the streams in his village? Why should an Igbo man um, bring back his investments? IVM, Innocent Vehicle Motors, is built in his village. Okay? Ibeto, many of them like that, cited their industries, their firms in their village. Okay? So, and I know quite a lot of Igbo people who have been caught by the Akuluono spirit because it's a spirit, it's a living spirit, okay, that are bringing back their investments back home. They are doing more than just building houses in the village. They are bringing back their investments back home. I know of a man who brought virtually all his investments at home. Go to villages now, you see factories sited, you see a farms, commercial farms sited, you see uh, civic centers, you see all kinds of development uh, vocational centers being erected in where we call villages today. Okay? So, Igbos are doing more than just building gigantic houses. So, I want us to broaden the scope so that you know we know what we are dealing with here. They are doing more than that and they need to do more. They need to do more because the Akulono spirit is a very vibrant, is a viable spirit and is catching up with every true son and true daughter of the Igbo land. Because for many years, even I read from my Bible that when we don't bring, I read from, I can't remember exactly the same place, that when people, that your land will be married, I think somewhere in the book of what, Isaiah, Ezekiel, that your sons and daughters will bring their spoils back home. So a land is deemed to be cursed when the sons and daughters of that land don't bring their spoils back home. Okay? But one of the things we must understand is that uh, in the spirit of Akulono, major developments are taking place in Igbo land. I need you to understand that. Now, if you say because Nigeria is home, you just answered the question, why should an Igbo man build a house or build a gigantic house in his village? If you say it's because of investment, I've just answered that because Igbos are doing more than just building as they are bringing factories back to their villages. They are bringing, they are building factories, they are building roads, they are building civic centers, they are building vocational centers, they are bringing schools back to their village. So that's investment. That is investment. Alright? So, if you say, whatever reason you give, okay, answers that question. Because we must understand, number one, the home factor. The home factor. You must understand what goes on in the mind of an average Igbo man. The average Igbo man uh, sees himself as a business nomad. He could go anywhere in the world to... Um, anywhere in the world to actually start a business he works very hard and in that same spirit of ojembe Miro, all right he builds he contributes he contributes to the development of the place unlike what most people do unlike what most people do he contributes that is only an Igbo man that you see that will build estates Build plazas, develop markets, major buildings, erect buildings, develop international markets in places that are not his homeland. Tar roads, 
and all that. All this because we believe in the ideology of Ojembe Nwiro, the voyager, the journey, the, the one that embarks on the journey has no enemy. So we don't see our hosts as our enemy. So we contribute. We contribute to the development of that place. That's the psychology of an Igbo man. But no matter what, there is something that still tells the Igbo man that you are a stranger here. One day you will retire back. If you don't retire in life, you will retire in death. You must take something home. Your wealth must reach your father's house. If not for nothing, number one, the beautification of the place. Do you see how beautiful those houses make the villages look? Nobody hates beauty. When those houses are built, like where I come from, when you look at it from the outskirts, if I take a picture of that place, you would think it's Guarimpa? Yes. If I take a, if I take a picture, or a night picture, you would think it's, 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 it's one place in, in Lagos. That is what it should be. It brings beauty to the village. And everybody loves beauty. Nobody hates beauty. It brings development. Nobody hates development. Okay? The Igbo man knows that one day I'm going to retire. That's, this is my home. And thank God that you people say that Igbos visit their homes. There's a usual ritual of the Igbo man is to return home every December, but it goes beyond that. The Igbos are communal. A typical Igbo man travels home a couple of times in a year, an average of four times in a year. A typical Igbo man. Why? Because if there's a wedding ceremony, he goes. If there's a funeral, he goes. If there's a major development, he goes back home. Whatever is happening in his village, he goes. And what do you expect him to do in those one week, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks that he's going to return back to the village? Do you want him to live in, in his father's house where probably there are other uh, um, men who have their wives and children already and, they are, and, they are, and they are, the whole place is crowded and they are fighting over a little space? Come on. Come on, I believe that the rationale behind building a befitting place, and if you think that building a house is, is okay, so why shouldn't the person make it befitting? Why should I build a mushroom in my village and build a palace in the city? What's the rationale behind that? Why should I build a mushroom in my village that I know that I'm going to retire eventually and then build a gigantic mansion in the village, in the town where I live. So the home factor is there. The Igbo man sees, I don't even want to go into the civil war thing that many people cite. I don't want even, even to go there. But the, all, the whole idea is that the Igbo man sees his father's land or his country home as his own home. That is, is his ancestral root. That is what gives him the identity. So he adds to the development of the place, to the beautification of the place. Whatever he needs to bring home to develop the place, he brings it back. Including building a beautiful house and a beautiful estate in his village. Okay? Now, moreover, let me take this further. What do you call a village or what do you call a city? A city today was once yesterday's, yesterday's a, a, a village. A village today will become tomorrow's city. So what are you talking about? In my village now, people are citing shops, are building civic centers, are building quite a lot of things now. Why? Because... The visionaries are foreseeing that in a very short time, this place is going to be turning into either a suburban area or it's going to turn into a city. We have that vision. It's only people who don't see far. And moreover, there is no place, especially in Anambra State now, and I know it is like that in so many other Igbo land, that 
you call a, a typical village. You don't. You don't have a typical village anymore because everybody is going to school. There are schools cited, high institutions everywhere. The people you call typical village people, most of them are students of high institutions. They can speak very well. They understand their psyche is not that of a typical village person anymore. And you have people coming from other places to live in that same place. Sometimes they rent the houses and all, and they leave. So what are we talking about? The village today will become tomorrow's city. So you have to look beyond today. You have to look beyond today. You have to look beyond today. All right? So for me, as I round up, I believe that this is the voices of the enemy. Okay? I'm not reacting to what my beloved uh, woman of God said. Uh, um, I'm not attacking her per se. I'm reacting to this notion. Because I know that she's caught into the web and in the web of this and she's amplifying it with her personality. But the truth is that every true son and daughter of Iboland is already has already imbibed the Akulono spirit. And people are bringing their investments back home. And this is natural. They commonly is commonly said travel east, west, north, and south. Home is the best. Home is the best. Bring build the best of your houses or the best of estate in your home. Who wants to come back to a hut in the village? Who wants to come back to a mud house after enjoy? I don't know how people reason. After enjoying the beauty of where you call a city, then you return back to your home and you. Return back to a hut. You return back to a mud house. You return back to a touch house. Who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? So nobody wants to do that. So we need to understand this. There is no reason if it is not just the voice of the enemies. And I want you, my beloved, my beloved, my beloved uh, actress, don't be caught into this web. These are the voices of the enemy. I know you, that you are a true daughter of the land and you are well rooted in your place and you have done investments in your place and uh, you have done so much, but continue doing. Because the village, that place you call a village today has the capacity to blow up, to become a city. Become a city. So in the Kumunai Nibo Kaimwe Uche Malumbu Nilo Niku Emegomi Heni Lemme, where Chopotebu Kuas, where Nabi. I've done my little research to check where these voices are coming from. I don't want to say things that I will, I will retrieve, that I will feel bad that I said, but I know where it's coming from. I know where it's coming from. This idea of even returning home or going home to be is not just an evil thing. The houses do it. You give the houses a land, they turn it into a garrick. They don't even build anything decent there, but they return back to their home to the north and build gigantic houses. The best of houses are built in the north, in northern Nigeria. The best, the best of cars are, are, are driven in the north. I lived in the north also. I also know that the Yorubas have an element of this. It's just natural. The home factor is a natural thing. It's just a human thing. That you feel at home, more at home in your village, in your place of birth. It's a natural thing. All this thing we call civilization and all that is, is, is something else. All right? So, I in the malo akulono spirit kwesiri. Ijidonyo bonabonyibo. Kaibia de zoo bodai. E hobon e huru de ma. Ne bibi. Webatia na libo. Walun ke kachem ma weta na libo. Walu company kachem ma weta na libo. Walu la kuko kachem ma weta na libo. Walu factory kachem ma weta na libo. Bia kae luzio ukuru zai. 
Let's turn our villages into cities. Make it admirable. Let's turn the Igbo land into the new Dubai. That is the vision. So if you've not caught the bug, if you've not caught the bug, then it means you don't know what is going on right now. You don't know. And this is what happens when people live so much in the city and they are not in touch with home. They don't understand what is going on. They don't understand what is going on. So please... Omalicha one nine why Biko Maluno on the Lone Ku O In a mebu Idi Bonabu and Mena Mam Nigan Mena Ganilo Oye Wai Gozegi Chineke Gozia Nambara State Gozia Nugu State Gozia Mo State Gozia Bia State Gozia Bonya State Gozia Nyoma Gozia Kara Bundin and Ana Sibo Mande Quarren Habundibo Mande Quarrena Gozoru Nibonile the Noru Nibu Bumane Ekelemge Ahambo did his strides. Kachineke gozi okwai. God bye nobi. Kaiwa lewe mete here. God bless you. Did his strides. Signing out.